Coming up today on The Story. I was just a usual 15-year-old kid going through stuff you do. And I remember one night there, I'd you know, done some dumb things or whatever I'd, I'd done and I was struggling. And he was about probably 9.30 at night and he said, come on, mate, let's go for a walk. And we walked all through the lawns and we just kept going and going and it got later and later. It was a midweek. But he said, mate, it doesn't matter. We're just going to walk and talk until you can get it all off your chest. That never left me. The Story. The story. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story. Today we're continuing our series paying tribute to the late Ian Watson, who was better known simply as Watto. Today we'll hear from Ian's son Hayden, who will share what it was like growing up with a father who was an extremely gregarious, larger-than-life character who always had an encouraging word for whoever he happened to be with. Hayden says he loved it and is happy to be playing a part in continuing his father's men's ministry known as... Shed Happens, which has touched the lives of blokes all over Australia. Hayden's having a chat with Eric Scadabo, and we'll share a bit of his own story along with insights into his father's life journey. Hayden Watson, welcome to the program. Good to speak with you, Eric. Glad to have you with us, and you're joining us from Brisbane, is that right? Correct, yes, Brisbane. Okay, well, before we talk to you about what it was like having Watto for your father. Let's find out a little bit about you. Were you born in the Brisbane area? Yeah, I was. I've uh, grown up around the north side of Brisbane, and I got married uh, after going through university and studying civil engineering, and lived on the coast for about nine years at Cool, which was a lovely break in life from mm-hmm. uh, living on the north side, and I always wanted to live near the beach, and then moved back to Brisbane when my eldest son was in year two. Okay, well, let's go back to your childhood. What are some of your earliest memories of growing up with Watto as your father? My earliest childhood memories, everything was pretty exciting. My brother at the uh, memorial said life was like living in the front seat of a roller coaster, having my father as a father, and um, I've got lots of fun memories. My biggest one is, um, of course, he loved footy. And he had three boys, and uh, we had so much fun kicking the ball and following him around at footy and being part of all of that. And of course, as we heard in the introduction, your father was the founder of the Shed Happens Men's Ministry. Did he share his faith with you? He did, but um, Dad really wasn't probably the driving force or the person who introduced me to God. It, it, it was my mother, mm-hmm. and um, my mother's mother's. My grandmother, when I look back now, had a big influence, so... There was no way that I ever doubted whether God was real. I pretty much had a faith as long as I can remember because it was so important to my mother and I could see in her life what it meant. Mm -hmm. There always comes a time in your life when you do make a big decision. And um, I went to Grace College and I remember in year eight hearing someone speak and I can't remember who it was at this point in time. It was was an evangelist. And um, I remember him explaining the crucifixion in detail. And I remember sitting there and, that was probably one of the big moments where I thought, no, no, yeah, I'm definitely in. Jesus did that for me. But, yeah, no, mum mum was, um, mm-hmm. her faith was pretty strong. Dad really didn't probably get to know God until I was about year 10, about 15. Oh, what happened? Well, we lived on a property, and um, he'd been heavily involved with football and trotting horses because he's all his uncles and his father had always been involved in trotting horses. And he bought a property up at um, Burpengary, which I thought was fantastic. Us boys growing up on, on acreage and not wearing shoes for the first part of our lives and huh. riding horses and carrying on. But wow. he tried to sell the property and he couldn't sell it. And there was a number of things. He was frustrated with work. He'd been in a job in the public service for 22 years, which he didn't like the whole time. He mm. didn't want to be there. Wow. And um, I think... We was one day in the paddock where the trotting track was out the back, and we, we didn't have horses at this stage. They didn't. They ate more than the money that they won, the huh. prize money. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there was a point where Dad was trying to sell the property, mm-hmm. and uh, he was all doing it in his own work. And um, I think he said, God, if you're for real, then I want to give you a go. And that, that was pretty much a change of everything for him. Wow. How did that impact you personally? I was really happy, you know, I knew God and um, there was no questions for me, but I thought, oh, well, I love my dad and yeah. now he knows God and he wants to be part of it. It wasn't though he wasn't, didn't want to be part of God, but I thought, no, he's got it. So for me, it was great, but a dad who now knew God as well. 
And did you do anything together as far as go to retreats or any father and son Christian activities? Dad lived his life in an open book. And his faith to me, rather than go to many camps or Christian activities, was just seeing the changes in his life Mm -hmm. was the impact that it had on me. We did a lot of wonderful things in terms of football and that was pretty powerful in our lives. But just seeing him walk every day was the most powerful thing in my life. Mm -hmm. And then what happened next in his life? Well, the property sold and Dad was able to buy a smaller property, just a normal residential block in Petrie, Mm -hmm. and buy a truck and leave the public service. And um, he had zero dollars left to his name, actually, to put fuel in the the tank, but he'd, he'd owned the house and he owned the truck. But he had to be humble to go and ask his mate for $500 to fill the truck up to do the, the first couple of loads. So I watched that miracle that God did in his life, planning something better than Dad could ever imagine he could plan. And so for me, that, that never left me watching that happen. And then he went for seven years delivering sand and water to people. He had a truck on the back of the tank that... Um, mm-hmm came along with it and didn't know um, that was going to be any use, but actually it was. And after about seven years of doing that, someone, um, an old fellow at the, um, who was down at the police station when Dad was taking myself and my cousins and his friends and my uncles down there to get their license, saw him one day and said, are you a driver trainer? And he said, no, I'm not. He said, well, I get calls. Do you want to you want to go and do the training and I'll, I'll look after you and send you through people? And um, so that's how we started doing driver training. Oh, okay. But for Dad, it was more than that. He had spent um, his life playing football and then coaching and putting everything into people he was involved with, more than just playing football. He would get involved in their lives and trying to make them the best person that they could be. Hmm, Yeah. Suddenly, he was exposed to men one-on-one on the hour to be able to do exactly what he did best is talk to them. And he wanted to talk to them about not only teaching them how to drive the truck, he was interested in their hearts. Hmm. And it really just propelled him into the next part of his life. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a perfect role for him and his personality. Yeah, it was. It suited him. And, you know, you can see that people have different strengths in their life. Mm -hmm. That was his strength. God had him in the right place. So that's how he got involved in truck driver training after being a truck driver himself. And he had a huge impact on so many young men who were learning how to drive a truck. And your mother shared with me that a lot of what made him so special sharing with others was because of he had so much pain and troubles that he had gone through in his past and, and in his childhood. Yeah, I I think that um, he was impacted quite a bit by his mother passing away Mm -hmm. when he was 15 and his sister. Yep. Yeah, he he carried that with him. Um, Mm -hmm. How that affected him in in his life, I I probably can't put my finger on any of that being the driving force for what he did, but it probably made him very empathetic to those who, yes, had had lost others. But more importantly, he, he just had a passion for trying to make people the best that they were and know that everybody was loved. That Mm -hmm. was the consistent theme in his life the whole way through. And and from the extension from the the truck, really, that was just that part of his life. God blessed him financially from it, also put him in a place where he wanted to be. But he, at that time, started to get together with a lot of mates from his past who were all just battling through life Mm -hmm. and all he wanted to do was get them together and teach them how to talk, teach them how to open up their hearts and get rid of the junk out of their life. You know, I have a very strong memory and something that stands out of my father when I was about Mm -hmm. year 10, when I was 15. Soon after he made the move, sold the property, moved into Petrie where he he was and started his business for the first time, Mm -hmm. I was just a usual 15-year-old kid going through stuff you do. And I remember one night there, I'd done some dumb things or whatever I'd I'd done and I was struggling. And it was about probably 9.30 at night and he said, 
come on, mate, put your jogs on, let's go for a walk. And we walked all through the lawns and we just kept going and going and it got later and later. It was a midweek thing, but he said, mate, don't matter, we're just going to walk and talk until you can get it all off your chest. I don't care where we get to. Mm. And uh, we got him extremely late, but I thought that never left me. And that's what he did with everybody he came across. He, probably to his own detriment with sleep, mm. he would go as late and as long as needed to let that person get the junk off his heart and clear the rocks around his heart. That's mm. really what it was about. Yeah. You're listening to The Story. Today we're continuing our series paying tribute to the late Ian Watson, founder of the Shed Happens Men's Ministry. Today his son Hayden is sharing with us about the impact his father had on him, as well as insights into his father's life journey. We'll have more when we return. The Story. 